much of this message since I am back with the recruiting video that I was talking about. I actually had this recorded uh, on my phone, um, but I cursed in it. And that's what I think is why I couldn't upload it. I tried it like three or four times. Time wouldn't let me. Um, so I'm just going to record it on my laptop here today. Sorry it took so long to get this up, guys. I meant for this to be out. Honestly, I'm most a week after the last video, uh, but I ran into some trouble, like I said. So let's get right into this. Uh, it's a top 10 list of guys that have expressed the most interest, in my opinion, to be coming to Miami since Mark Richter was hired. I'm going to go in order. First, I have, this is probably, in my opinion, the least likely guy to come here. Five-star guy out of IMG Academy, tight end. You guys probably know him very well, Isaac Nauta. Uh, he's already taken his five officials because he's an early enrollee. Uh, so the fact that fact alone to me says a great deal about his original interest in Miami. Obviously, it wasn't very high, and the only reason he would come here now is because of rent. Um, besides that, a lot of you know probably he was on campus for an unofficial uh, with his buddy, uh, who's a quarterback, three-star quarterback. In my opinion. What that is, is honestly just try, him trying to get his buddy a scholarship to the U. Uh, didn't happen, looked like we didn't offer the guy afterwards. So I don't really expect that to happen. I'm going to say it's a very low chance. I'm going to give that 20%. Amon Richards is number two. Wellington guy, ex-commit, obviously, during Al Golden's tenure here. He, he committed after he got fired. He has four officials scheduled with one already taken last month in November 27th to Auburn. Uh, then he has three in January that are scheduled, uh, work first, uh, January 15th. Then, in my opinion, the biggest uh, position to us is Alabama, who he has scheduled the next week, January 22nd, and then Tennessee, January 29th. I think this will come down to Miami, Alabama, possibly Auburn. Uh, if it gets to the 29th of January before he commits, it could possibly be Tennessee. But I I think after Alabama, or even after us, he could commit to someone, I believe. I mean, I don't think he's the type of person. He's, he seems like a very low-key type of guy. He's not on Twitter a lot. Doesn't really uh, – he's not the type of guy that's very covered a lot. It seems like he's very under the radar, even though he's four stars, a uh, quiet type of guy. So I, I don't think he would like all the glitz and glamour, so he may commit early. Uh, I would give that a 50% chance between us and Alabama. Third guy is a commit to FSU. Uh, he's a uh, safety. They say he could also play DB, but he's like six foot four and a half, so he'd be an extremely tall DB. Uh, Jamel Cook, Jamil Cook, whatever. How, I'm sorry if I mispronounced your first name. Um, I think it's Jamel, but whatever. It's not a big deal. Um, we're not on his official visits. He actually hasn't visited anyone. Um, he's just on here because of his comments recently that I've heard. Uh, he's giving Miami a shot. And besides FSU, we're the only school that he's looking at besides FSU. If he gets on campus, this number goes way up. But right now, I'm giving it 35%. So a little bit higher than Isaac now. Next guy is a D-tackle out of Destrehan High School, famously known for putting Ed Reed into the NFL. Before that, obviously, putting him in Miami. Uh, his name is Glenn Logan. He's also committed to LSU. I think we have a better chance of flipping Glenn Logan than Jamel Cook. Uh, first reason is he's expressed not just interest in our program before Rift, and I think that's a big deal because you're not just committing to play for the coach. Like, this proved it this year. Al Golden, no coach is guaranteed. Rick got fired from Georgia after 15 years of winning 10, 9 to 10 games a year, pretty much, is what he averaged. Um, so, obviously, everybody knows no one guy's job is safe. So, you're going to commit to a school, not just the coach. But obviously, the coach helps. A lot of these guys are interested in us because of the coach now. So, Glenn Logan, he's had previous interests, and he likes the higher rate. And those two go hand in hand, and to him, hopefully, scheduling an official visit sometime in January. Um, as of right now, he doesn't have an official vis uh, visit scheduled, um, but I, I think it's only a matter of time, honestly. 
I would give this uh, not 50%, but I'm going to go 45%, right under it. Fifth guy is a very highly touted guy out of uh, Elder County. He's an athlete. He plays both sides of the ball. Nicole Harvin Jr. A lot of the recruiting sites that I mentioned, or I mentioned in the previously recorded video that wasn't uploaded, Kane Sport, Kane's Insight, Kane, uh, Kane Insider, Inside the U, uh, and State of the U. Those are the main five that I look at on a daily basis. I would definitely recommend checking out State of the U, uh, Kane's Insight, Kane Insider. Those are all free. Uh, you have to pay for uh, Inside the U and Kane Sport. So um, if you guys just want to check out something, check out what it's about. Kane, uh, Kane Insider, Kane's Insight, and uh, all, uh, State of the U. Um, they've all reported about Hardman's interest in Miami before RIT and after, and they're both positive. He actually visited us before uh, Rick was hired. Uh, this might have been back when Golden was still coaching. I'm not sure. It probably was right around the time of the Clemson game, September 18th. Uh, he visited us. Then he visited Michigan November 28th, and he has one visit in January and then on the 22nd to TCU. Honestly, I don't really know who the competition is for him. I I would say 30% right now that he comes, only because it, and. I really wish his visit was in January and not already happened. If his visit was coming up in January, I would go up to 60% honestly on this guy. Uh, I think it would be a lot easier to get him if he was at a visit with Rick, not with Golden. Um, so that's just my main concern is how his visits go coming up and also how he responds to the coaching highs. I think that's the big deal as well. He's probably waiting to see who Rick tires. Um, and how hard they go after him. Uh, I'll go into that in another video. Look out for that one to come out at most, I promise at most, a week from now. Uh, the next guy on this list is Shaheem Carter out of Kentwood. He's listed as an athlete somewhere. He's listed as a DB somewhere. He's Everybody pretty much agrees he's going to stick to the defensive side of the ball in the next, uh, in the next level. But he was an athlete in high school. He played both sides of the ball. Um, he is a four-star guy. Uh, I think he's pretty tall, like 6'1", 6 6 not 100% sure on that. Uh, the only reason I have him on this list is a video I saw of his, uh, an interview. I'm not sure who interviewed him, but uh, it's on YouTube, it's on Twitter. You've probably seen some of it, at least. Uh, and basically, he said he could see himself at Miami only because of Ritz. And... If he gets, if Rick can get him on campus, I think that won't seal the deal. But I would go 60% with him, just like I would Hardman if they both got on campus uh, with Rick, not like Hardman where he did with Golden. But right now, I'm going to say a little bit above Nato's percentage. I'm going to go 25% with Carter right now. I think he's pretty low. Uh, just because of the fact he hasn't visited us. Uh, he has expressed interest now that Rick is our coach, but before that, he didn't really have a lot of interest in us. And he's also an SEC guy. He's very interested in Alabama, Auburn, I've heard, uh, possibly some other schools that over in the SEC. But moving on to the next guy, DeVoy Whaley, former commit of Georgia, actually. He goes to Boom, uh, sorry, Beaumont Central. He's a running back, four-star guy. Uh, pound the rock type of guy. He's also got some good burst out of the backfield. Um, haven't watched a ton of film on him, uh, so I don't, I can't really give you an in-depth analysis of him unless you guys want me to, and I'll watch some more film of him. But uh, basically, the only reason is because of Rick. He was a former commit to Georgia. He visited Georgia September 19th. Also visited Texas A&M and Arkansas. Um, I would say until he gets on campus and schedules an official route, because he hasn't scheduled one yet, I would say 30%. He schedules an official, possibly 40. If he goes on campus, probably 50. So that, that breaks down really. Jordan Woods, strong side defensive end out of Miami Central. This is a guy who is considered a heavy Florida lead for a, a lot of the, the, the recruiters. 
recruitment period this year. Uh, but once Rift came to Miami, he changed his tone a little bit, saying he has interest. He actually uh, has a we're on his last official schedule right now, which bodes well, in my opinion. It's not a bad sign for your last uh, official, but usually it's a good sign. Uh, Tennessee visited October 10th. Georgia Tech, he has uh, scheduled before us, January 15th, and over the 22nd. He doesn't have Ford on here, but he's been up there a lot unofficially. So he, he's that type of guy who feels he doesn't need to official to Florida. He probably either use it somewhere else or not use it probably. Um, right now, I'd say 40% with him. And if his visit goes well, like I think it will, I think he could he could be a, a very likely candidate to commit next as well. Uh, like uh, a guy later on this list who I think is probably the most likely to commit next. Um, but let's go to the second to last guy I have on this list before the guy I just mentioned, Marcus Tatum out of Mainland High School. He's offensive tackle. He has three visits set up. He's exactly like Jordan Woods, Florida guy, Florida lean most of the period. Uh, liked Art Kehoe beforehand, so it was good. He liked Miami a little before, uh, but I think Rick, the Rick Hire, would do some good things for him. I haven't really heard a lot about what he thinks yet. Um, I'm still waiting on that. I've heard a lot of, uh, even like WQAM, if you guys listen to the radio station down here, uh, they've even talked about how important they think he would be to the class, and I kind of agree. Six foot seven type of guy. Obviously, we had Danny Isadora playing offensive tackle, and he's really a guard. The guy's six foot four, six foot three, uh, not six foot five, six foot six. Um, and this, this tall, slender guy has a big frame to put a lot more weight on. I don't think he'd play right away, definitely need a red shirt year. Uh, he's only like 255. Uh, we're his last official schedule to January 22nd, but unlike Woods, he does have Florida right before us, the 15th, and he visited Tennessee already in November. I don't think Tennessee's in it. Honestly, I think it's between Florida and us. Um, if he commits to Florida, I, w I don't expect him to come here, honestly, if he commits to Florida the week before us. I'm going to go 40% with the other 60 going to Florida. Last guy on this list, I would go 100% if I felt comfortable doing that, but I don't because I do think uh, there's an SEC school that has a chance with this guy. He's uh, a cornerback at Coconut Creek, Malik Young. Uh, he was committed to Georgia as well, like DeVoe Whaley. He has, he has three visits scheduled and had one already in October to Ohio State. Ohio State is probably still in it. They were in it very early in the process, but I've, I've heard that they have let up on the gas pedal a little bit once he committed to Georgia. So they could have fallen back in the picture a little bit. Um, then we have a January 15th visit with him and Auburn the next weekend, 22nd, who I think has a decent shot to get him. He expressed uh, interest in Auburn beforehand, uh, before he visited Georgia, or he, I don't think he visited Georgia before he committed to Georgia. I would say 70% with Malik Young, and I wouldn't be surprised if he did it before the New Year, uh, before the All-America Games. I wouldn't be surprised if he did it at the All-America Games. Um, so... That's it, guys. That wraps up my recruiting analysis. The top 10 guys who, after the mark retired, have expressed, or at least I think they will express major interest going forward, or I hope. These are also some of the guys that I would like to land in this class. So leave your thoughts in the comment section below. Tell me what you guys think of this list. If uh, you like the names on this list, you would like them to come to Miami, whether if you don't know a lot about them, if you'd like to research them, uh, if I have, if you if you want to know where I find my information, I already told you the websites. Go check them out. Also, I listen to WQAM a lot, so if you guys want to uh, listen to WQAM, that helps. Uh, Hurricane Hotline is a good way to get started with that. Um, if you go to WQAM.com, they have uh, different segments uh, posted, so you can just watch segments. You don't have to watch the whole show. Or listen, I mean, you can't watch or you listen. Um, if you guys have a favorite out of this list, let me know. 
If you have multiple favorites, just let me know. We can talk in the comments section below. Uh, remember, this is only the start of the conversation. We can continue it and finish it down below. Uh, so, uh, I'm signing out.